Hey everybody, Rodaman here. Thanks for tuning in to Star Sector. So before I started this episode, I did some mathematical calculations about global market share. Uh, if you do recall, one of the goals of this series was, and this was recently enacted, but one of the goals was to own about 50% of the global market share. And I wanted to figure out how close I was to that uh, target. And what I came up with is that I'm uh, the market leader on some things, but not all things. Uh, the few things that I'm not the market leader on would be volatiles. I have about 48% market share in volatiles. Uh, funny enough, my 48% market share comes almost exclusively from perdition. Uh, let me just get to my planet so I can show you. Uh, let's go to the Gilead jump point. And which is somehow not near Gilead at all. Uh, I also lack harvested organs, drugs, metals, transport tonics, and fuel. Fuel and volatiles obviously linked. Drugs and harvested organs obviously linked. Metals and transport tonics obviously linked. Um, but yeah, let me, let me just show you the actual math. So if we take a look at uh, all of my worlds here, this is how to tell. So for instance, you're looking at perdition. Here are my commodities. Uh, so between perdition and Livueta, obviously that adds up to about 48%. And there's no other worlds here. So I have about 48% of the, uh, I say world, I meant galactic market share. Um, for me to increase this, I need to find a planet with transplutonics, or uh, with, uh, sorry, uh, volatiles on it, so I can mine it and produce it. Um, and then things like uh, organs, harvested organs and drugs, uh, they are driven from population alone. So if you take a look, I've got Bezel and Lovoetta, some of my po most populous worlds, cranking out 12% each, uh, Perdition at 11%, Yig at uh, 7%, and it... And, that, and that's about it. Um, so obviously, for me to get more harvested organs for the global market, um, I would need to just increase my population. That's it. Uh, same with drugs. Drugs are the same way. Because the, the things that produce uh, drugs uh, is, as you can see here, it's just population and, and infrastructure. That's it. Uh, one of the things that I could do to increase this is to move my beta cores to my population and infrastructure planets that are populous, and it would decrease the demands and increase the production. Uh, and if I had an alpha cores to spare, which I may or may not, depending on how many new worlds I colonize. Um, and then the last thing that I'm lacking on, uh, let's go to bezel, would be, uh, funny enough, it's not ore. I have the global market share of ore. I mine ore like crazy. It would be transplutonics, transplutonic ore, and metals. So if you take a look at transplutonic uh, ore, for instance, uh, 20, 33, uh, 41, 41% 41 transplutonic ore. Transplutonics are very similar. You got 19, uh, 30, and then 40. So I'm about roughly 40 for transplutonics and the ore. And then for metals as well, uh, 17, uh, 30, or seven, uh, 29, or 28, rather, uh, 39. So, roughly my ore and metals, transplutonics and metals are about 39, 40% market share. For me to increase this, I would need, um, roughly another Blue Crow or Warman sized mining operation. So, those are the three sort of holes I have. And one of the things I thought was, why don't I just colonize some additional planets uh, in the new systems that I have? So now what I'm just doing is, uh, let's take a look. Uh, diffuse volatiles, that's gonna suck. Um, so this planet here has a very low hazard rating and has uh, ore and rare ore. So that would be a very good choice, Dazog's Perch, uh, for a, a planet to expand to. Uh, and then I would need a, a planet with some volatiles, some decent volatiles, which, as you can see here, I'm not exactly finding, 
one that has a ton of volatiles? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, this cryovolcanic world has a ton of volatiles. Uh, unfortunately, it also has a high hazard rating, but yeah, I can afford that. Let me see if there's actually somewhere in the polyver, si polyver system that can rival that, because I don't really want more systems. Uh, so the sector, or here, show system info. All right, so you are okay. Uh, Eventide hasn't collapsed yet. Um... Diffuse volatiles. So this toxic world has plen plentiful volatiles, but um, not much of a, an advantage to go there. Uh, Sphinx is still active. So I would say conclusively, my best bet, I just happen to be at Kanan, uh, my best bet would be to settle out this sector. It would be uh, settling at, um, oh, what did I say? Uh, Augean and Dazak Perch. Those two. And that's probably going to help me push my numbers up. Enough that I can afford to be the market leader in these things. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. First things first, I'm going to take on a lot additional crew. Because we're going to need some additional crew. Uh, let's go to Dazog's perch or whatever it's called first. I also have to be wary that I'm a little low on supplies and um, fuel. I need to re-up those at some sort of pit stop sooner or later. Oh, actually, you know what? This little makeshift sensor. Let's uh, break it for salvage. And set up a... Uh, Nav? No. I don't have enough uh, transmetonics on me, actually. Um, oh, so I already have the stability. Yeah, so I could have just claimed that. I, I wanted the stability, but um, I didn't realize I already had one. So I plan on continuing to pressure the hegemony. Uh, and, and pressuring them is also going to aid me in my goal. Ooh, there's some ruins here with some missile blueprints. All right, so I'm establishing a colony here. I'm just gonna keep it Dazog Perch. Uh, I'm going to assign an AI core to govern, assign an AI core in its population. Because this isn't a popular populous world, I'm gonna keep um, just a gamma, uh, a gamma core. Uh, I do have a lot of money, so let's set up this one I was settling for mining and refining. So I'm gonna build mining, and then I'm gonna do a uh, massive growth incentive, because I want it to grow quickly. And once its starport is built, uh, I will then uh, make it a free port. Okay, Gilead just grew, that's great. Uh, in fact, Gilead, Gilead, you're mining. Uh, I really should be refining. That's also going to help me out a lot. All right, so we'll queue refining up. Because if I recall correctly, Gilead, well, refining at Gilead is going to get me, um, it's primarily going to get me regular old metals. It doesn't have any transplutonics. So I still... Even given that, I still need Dazak's Perch to be uh, colonized. Chalcedon just deteriorated. Uh, which means the last world from the Ludic Path is just gone. This, I don't believe, will actually stop the colony of threats. As you can see, the colony threats are still here. Even though they don't have a planet, somehow they still have terror cells. Um, yep, that's just by design. All right, so here is Augean, colonizing this one too. Uh, we are going to install the Alpha Core Governor. Uh, this here is going to be Plentable Volatiles, which means uh, we are going to also mine. And uh, they also have some additional moderate ore uh, that we can refine as well. And then an AI Core Gamma level to reduce demand here. 
and the same old growth incentive. All right, so those two are now set up. Uh, the next thing I would like to do is to head over to Rama because with the remainder, well, I might need to get some fuel first. Well, there we go, full mill. Oh, I thought Chalcedon was gone. Oh, I think it's deteriorated or decivilized. One or the other. Let me go check. So then, one way to um, to crank up my own numbers so that uh, my harvested organs and drug trade increase would be to add higher level uh, AI cores to the population centers of my most populous planets. see what condition this planet's in. In fact, I could just... Oh, it's not really telling me from a distance. Uh, but we have some domestic goods that are um, they're asking for. Yeah, they're trying to rebuild. Oh, and it's just civilized. Literally, right before my eyes, it is gone. It is no longer uh, a planet. Which means I can explore the ruins. Uh, what kind of planet is this? Uh, not, not that I, I need another one, I'm just sort of curious. Uh, this one, extensive ruins, poor farmland, rare ore, moderates. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't amazing. Alright, so we probably have enough fuel, I'll check in a second, to get to Rama. And then once I'm at Rama, I can refill. Uh, I can always, if... Yep, fuel range. So, I've never really used fuel range, but the brighter circle is round trip, and the uh, darker circle is a uh, single trip. So I have enough for a single trip to Rama with uh, fuel to spare. Now, as my planets grow, just any of them, all of them grow, my drug and um, harvested organ trade will increase. I believe they have to be size 6 first, so there is a little bit of a requirement to hit. Uh, so let's go Freeport Dazaganagian. Uh, and then the first thing I'm going to do, or right after I set up their initial industries, is upgrade to Megaport. And then I'm going to head to Lovaletta and show you the benefit of an Alpha Core running a population center. Oh, Yig just grew too. That is phenomenal. Uh... Let's see, I will dump all of my money into Yig's growth, which I'm probably never going to see proceeds from because I doubt it's going to hit 8 anytime soon. 7 to 8 is a huge jump. Very, very costly too. I'm just going to power through this storm. I know, people are going to get hurt, but I don't have a ton of fuel to maneuver around these uh, storms. I want to be careful about that. Alright, Sphinx just deteriorated. It's likely to civilize and be completely lost in the near future. So one of the one of the things that aided me in the con in the global market conquering was taking uh, the hegemony out of the equation because obviously they had a ton of planets, they controlled a lot of things, and then when I raided them all, uh, I really pushed them back to sort of the Stone Age. Um, all right, so here we are. Now let's take a look at the difference here. Right now I have a. Uh, a gamma core running this population and infrastructure. And if I check the global market share, I'm producing about 10% of the global harvested organs market. And I'm producing about 6% of the drugs. If I change the core out to an alpha core, let's, uh, I don't know if it immediately updates. It might have to take a month, but let's say I do that. 13%, uh, no, it's immediate. 13%, so Belter's market share is 42% now. 
Whereas for the other things, we've got, you know, uh, organics at 66, metals at 53, food at uh, 51. Valdals actually just jumped up uh, to 50%, meaning that uh, the Dazog perch might not even be necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, we got supplies at 52, heavy machinery at 52, harvested organs still lagging behind. This is um, this is where we could improve by uh, adding in it bezel yig and perdition and Gilead actually uh, better governors. So let's go ahead or be, not better governors, excuse me, uh, the population infrastructure better cores to manage it. So if I put in a, a bigger core. You know, we should see more drugs and, and organs. A weird a weird thing to be trying to control. Uh, alternatively, um, I would also be able to... Yeah, let's install this at YIG2. Uh, alternatively, I would be able to just um, raid some of the pirate bases that generate organs and uh, drugs. And, and that's another way to hit my 50%. There's two different ways. To outgrow the competition or to crush the competition. Uh, either or, fairly valid. So now if I take a look, um, actually the number really hasn't gone up. Has it for, uh, has it for drugs? Yeah. Eh, ish. Uh, so, what I mean by this, oh, I guess, no, actually I take it, so here are all the, um, the pirate and hegemony, uh, planets, and as you can see, they're really just not producing, as I've, I've crippled them. Uh, but we're going through fuels obviously one that I need to do uh, and if I'm gonna do fuel I'm going to need to pick up my uh, synchrotron core um, and I believe that was stashed at Libueta storage yes so the pristine uh, nano forges are here and the synchrotron core uh, also fuel and more fuel. I don't need that, that many goods. How many supplies? I'll just take 2k. That's still a lot. Okay, I'm almost fully fueled up. I'll head over to Perdition to fuel up the rest. And also Perdition has an open market which I can dump that stuff. Oh, I don't even have money to pay. Hold on, hold on. Oh, that's funny. Uh, let me get rid of all that and then refuel. Yeah, I'm so poor because I, uh, I, I tax incentivized. Um, so now my best bet is to head back to Canaan and um, ooh, refining at Pulver just started. Mm, building. That will help out as well. Head back to Canaan and make sure that I... Uh, I babysit them so they're not raided, and uh, actually, let's take a look at colony threats. Yep, there is a Luddic path messing with Kanan. All the other uh, belters are either sleepers or disrupted, uh, so I don't really need to worry about that. And then we do have one uh, raid coming in from the Hegemony. I don't know how they even have the fleet capacity to come mess with me, because i they're very crippled. Uh, Sphinx is decivilized, um, meaning that uh, they're on their way to becoming not a colony anymore. If we check the decivilized uh, Sphinx, no, actually, Sphinx is full. Sphinx is gone, right? Decivilized means it's gone. Uh, Hold on, let me check in to show system info. Where's Sphinx? Yep, Sphinx is gone. It's totally poofed. It's, uh, that's one fewer hegemony planets to worry about. I may need to do another round of suppressing hegemony planets, uh, but I, I probably have a good half a year before that is the case.
So as much as this is a combat uh, game, it is also a economic one. Um, all right, so spaceport, assign an A core. We have a bunch of gamma cores that we could throw around here. So I'm going to assign all the gamma cores I can. All it does is reduce demand, uh, which isn't necessarily going to be big. Uh, if I wanted to invest a bit bigger in these newer worlds, uh, beta and alpha cores obviously would be more needed. Oh, that's cute. The hegemony inspection. Um, I did get a comment about what happens if you don't uh, pay this off or resist, and they take all your cores. Don't let them do that. You don't want to lose all your cores. I figured I'd just mention that. Uh, what else? There's really not much I need to do here. I could upgrade. I mean, I'll, I could assign AI core even though it really doesn't do anything. I have so many. Like, there is no demand that is made by... Pl uh, planetary shields is truly pointless. Um, Because all it doesn't have an economy. All right. There's nothing to do with Gilead, but Agian, there is. My little shielded worlds look pretty cool, though, I gotta say. They're pretty hard to raid as well. I'm curious, did I even search all the ruins? No, I did search that ruin. Because there's a lot of ruins in the core systems. Then once they become depopulated, depop like Sphinx, if I went to Sphinx, I might be able to search the ruins there. And that actually might be worth my time. Because I'm not too far from Sphinx. Alright, managing the colony. Uh... So let's try that out. A thought experiment of sorts. Now another way that I could achieve the global market domination of 50% or greater in the shortest amount of time would be to conquer the planets that are rivaling me. But, um, I want to try to keep the allies I've kept so far. At this point, I think I've fully demonstrated with the total conquering of uh, the hegemony that I'm really not rivaled anymore. And I don't think I need to establish my authority in that way anymore. Uh, it's very clear that I am the global leader. The, 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 I keep saying global, but the galactic leader. Yep, so they had a midline blueprint. This is a good way to get blueprints that you can't really find otherwise. Is to, um, you know, destroy entire planets and, uh, and take it. So here's Palver over here. So, for instance, if you're having a really tough time trying to... I kind of want my... Yeah, I've already incentivized that. If you're having a tough time trying to find certain blueprints, you could go to the worlds at where those blueprints exist. So, if you want high-tech blueprints, for instance, you could head on over to a Tritachion world, decivilize it, and then search the ruins. And there is no guarantees, but um, yeah, I mean, you might be able to find something. All right, Pulver. Uh, let's assign these Gamma Cores. And I don't think there's much else for me to do here. Upgrade the Orbital Station. Why not? I got the money. Let's head over to Eventide just to figure out at what process are they recovering from my, um, my raids and sabotage. Oh. Tinker City, you're back up? Okay. Let's just disco ball this baby down.
pretty puny uh, orbital station. I think really the game changer was getting that orbital works with the alpha core and the pristine um, nanoforge is when I went from a contender of galactic dominance to truly galactic dominance. It, in all honesty, is a little too easy to do. I don't disagree with that. Uh, there are mods that make it more difficult. There are mods that really ramp up the difficulty of the AI so that they can truly counter you a little bit better. And in the future, I might have a modded run of just that. Um, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to uh, use kid gloves. Oops, I don't mean to do a saturation bombardment. Just a good old-fashioned raid on your uh, starport. Just because, you know, there's, there's, there's no point in pretending to be less powerful than you really are. So they have about 100 days left for some of these things. I might as well disrupt uh, some of it while I'm standing here. Spaceport, I think, is most important. But I don't really need to fully disrupt because they there's still time left on the clock. Um... That way, we could perhaps figure out, let's head over to Kanan again, and figure out uh, where the uh, Pather cells are harassing, so that those worlds can prosper more quickly. I'm just trying to look out for the newer colonies. My older colonies, and it's certainly the ones way the hell up north, or whatever up, um, they're fine. My Hanas colonies are doing just okay. Now in the Seth video, um, where he popularized this game, uh, this was before I started the series, but I've actually been playing this game for years and years and years now, I just, before I was even a YouTuber. But I, I digress. Um, he really pushed towards harvested organs and drugs, a black market trade of having high populations run by AI cores. And that's kind of what I'm doing here now. Um, a little derivative, yes, but uh, it's it's really the end game. It's like, what else do you have to do left other than do just that? Uh, creating, you know, uh, giant, giant um, empires that control the market because you can always switch up your ships but but combat can get stale uh, there's only so much combat in the game so far uh, this much the much the reason for this is because um, you know there's this game's in development so there's only just so much content that's in here and there's no real big story or end game or anything like the like that yet uh, I'm sure this is to come. So, uh, let's check out colony threats. For me to figure out what is harassing Kanan, I would need to probably pay someone off in one of these bars. So let me go ask around the bars and figure out what's irking them. Uh, nope, that is a delivery contract for Blue Crow, which is way too far for me to bother doing. I would probably lose money on that contract just given the amount of fuel I would need to get there and back. Who are you? Oh, a Belter Mercantile Convoy. Very nice. Bring supplies to Gilead. No one wants to talk to me here either? Am I going to have to search for the, uh, the Pathercell 
blind. Please tell me I don't have to do that. That is not particularly fun. So as you can see, as I control more of the galactic economy, uh, my monthly income becomes greater. A dollar invested is two dollars saved. It's not really a saying, but it is now. I said it. Uh, what was I doing here? The bar. Nope, no one's going to tell me. Uh, well, if I go to Colony Threats, they are clearly coming from somewhere down here. I don't think... Are they really threatening me, though? Gilead. Yeah, there's sleepers here. So, it's a potential threat, but not a real threat. Oh, you stupid hegemony. They uh, just showed up to bully me about my AI cores, and they got slapped. Nope. Gilead is now starting uh, refining, which is good. I have enough supplies and can afford supplies to hit every storm on my way there if I really want to. Unfortunately, Cetrian, just the tug, just took some damage. Alright, let's try to find where these little uh, sleeper cells are. And the Hegemony AI inspection is about to get slapped as well. Oh, maybe they're near this jump point. Something's near this jump point. I just saw on the radar pop up. Okay, maybe not. It's a fleet, and they're moving around. So their inspection failed because they got blown up. Alright, so are you Pather? Yep, you are Pather Watchers. Uh, pursue, second command, blow them up. So they're somewhere around here. Because they're sleepers, if I can't find them with a little bit more effort, uh, I just could ignore it. Until they ramp up and they're actually a terror cell. I think what would be wise is to check the gravity wells of these planets. And to scan some of the... Oh, here we go. This is some indicator. Yep, they're around the gravity wall of this planet. Let's go with low-tech deployment. Way overkill low-tech deployment. This should be a really, really small base because they were a sleeper cell uh, against a planet with not a whole lot of um, pather interest. So this base shouldn't be all that well-developed. It should be a pretty small little base. And it is. Exactly how I envisioned. This is a very disproportionate response to a very small threat. But all threats to my empire, to the Belters, are threats to be taken violently and seriously. Because that's all I know. Crashed. I mean, of course they are. <laughs> like, my many, many battleships against their garbage. Yeah, it was never a question of if, but when. Right now, I'm just monster trucking the debris out of my way. And they're done. Overkill is the best kind of kill. Right. Well, in no way did this trip pay for itself. Uh, it was an expensive little excursion, costing supplies and fuel, but I feel good about it. And that's really what matters, right? Uh, so, refining at Pulver is complete. Um, 
That's going to help me out a lot, I think. What do I want? My... Colony threats. Okay. So if I wanted to farm up some more AI cores, there are some um, rem high threat remnant nearby, like at uh, Svarin. Uh, so if I resupplied a little bit of fuel, because I don't have a whole lot of fuel right now, I could go hit that up, uh, possibly for some benefit. I think my new worlds... Okay, so it's, it's really uh, another way to up my... My market share of drugs is my mid-sized worlds, Anyang, Warman, and Blue Crow, uh, to growth incentivize them so that they start to produce those things for me. Uh, same with Gilead and Palver. All those mid-sized worlds that are sort of old but not that old, uh, I'll dump a whole lot of money into. I just dumped uh, like one point something mil into them. Um, so that they can maybe grow and become size 6 and start... Uh, producing drugs for me. Right, I don't know why I'm back at Gilead because there's no fuel to be had here. What I really need to do is... Alright, let's do a, v a refuel. Most of the worlds around here just like don't have a lot of fuel on them. So it, it is kind of tough to refuel, to be honest. Uh, but we're already here. So... Just jump right back out. There goes even a little bit more of my fuel. So you guys are 70% of the way to grow. I'll just keep dumping money. I jumped in way not close to the uh, trade. Level water just increased size 8. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, so global market share of harvested organs. I started this episode at about 42%. I'm now at 46%. And then for drugs, I started it at uh, 44%. I'm at 45%. So it is increasing as my population is increasing. Uh, it's going to be a slow, slow process. But uh, the fact that level water just grew is... Really good progress. Um, that is an exciting thing. And even Tide just deteriorated. Which means soon it might decivilize, uh, meaning it will go bye bye. One of the. the, you know, capital worlds of the hegemony crumbling to my might. Oh, this was a good place to stop in it. Oh, I don't have the money for that. They had some decent amount of fuel. Alright, I should take it easy on the growth incentives, because I have nothing right now. So if I... I could go to Svarin right now. Uh, was it April 11th? Um, hmm. I'm going to go over to Tile. Yeah, sure, scan me. You're not going to find anything. I've got a smuggler. Hides all his stuff in those hard to search places. Well, let's check on uh, metals. So, metals at 42%. This is climbed from 39. Uh, Transbutonic. At 41, that climbed up from 40. And then ore at 42, which climbed up from 40. Uh, fuel probably hasn't changed it at all. So if I... I gotta go to, like, Perdition to see fuel. Fuel still 41. Actually, that fell from 42%. So, uh, Sindrian uh, Dictat actually probably expanded. But at least Valdals now. Uh, Valdals very clearly, because of Augian, is above 50%. Thanks, Og. And then as soon as Augian grows, I'll put in uh, fuel refining 
and Augin will quickly help me take over the global market for fuel. So I'm just gonna putz around this system uh, until the end of the month when I get my new income so that I can refuel a little bit more. So here is me putzing. Dazog, Perch just grew. I don't have the money to actually build a new infrastructure, but this is going to be uh, refining next um, because we'll get transplutonics out of that and transplutonic ore and all that jazz. I just need to wait until May 1st. Which is boring. All right, uh, Eventide just decivilized, meaning it is no longer a valid colony, or rather it's gone. Uh, so if I check the sector, as you can see, Eventide's poofed. Uh, Tinker City should be on the way there. This would have been a really nice world, because it has abundant rare ores and abundant volatiles, and uh, yeah, some organics as well. Not that I need the organics, I already control that market. But uh, I didn't want to wait for the hegemony worlds to deteriorate. I might actually not need to re-bully or re-raid a lot of the hegemony worlds if they're starting to deteriorate on their own. Um, a lot of them seem to... Decivilize is when they're gone. Asher just decivilized from the Lodic Church. Uh, and then some of the hegemony worlds are starting to deteriorate. Deterioration means without a lot of intervention, um, the world will be lost. Without some um, procurement of goods. Okay, so here we are. Now I can actually afford to resupply and repair and whatnot. Okay, awesome. And then, uh, of course, we want the perch. So we are mining up um, transplutonic ore. We are going to refine that. So that's going to be the next thing I build here. And then after I build that, uh, I'm going to build. Yeah, you know, we'll ground the forces. Ground forces. That's fine. Um, did Ogin grow? No, Ogin has not grown yet. It's at eighty-eight percent to grow. All right. Uh, I think at this point I'm going to go to Sfarn. Or, sure. Oh, they found cargo anyway. Well. You know, you can't stop me. Okay. Uh, the Hegemony and Syrah just went poof. They're gone. Oh, Hegemony. You picked the wrong enemy. Okay. Buying a little bit more fuel here. I really should just get another fuel tanker. Just, I don't know, get a massive amount of fuel storage or something like that. But whatever. All right, let's go get some AI cores while we wait so that I can invest those AI cores in the planets that need to grow quicker. So, Svarin, I don't think I've destroyed the Nexus there. I know I've only really destroyed one Nexus, and that was at Dis. And Tinker City, gone. So, Samara should be my own. There shouldn't be really any other colonies at Samara now. And there's not. Uh, there's just Polver and Polver only. Uh, I've conquered everybody else. That's right. You got spanked, Hegemony. Spanked, I say. You're done. You're done, son. You picked on me for having AI cores, and then my AI core fueled economy whooped your little hiney. And there's nothing left of you. Alright, well, a bunch of my uh, sh ships just got messed up. Megaport at uh, Ogyan. That's important. I'm about to grow. I'm 97% of the way there. And Megaport at Dazog's. Oh, I don't much like the fact that there's tiny, tiny little fleets here. That's not cool. 
Hit me with your be big, big fleet. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Because they have... Oh, actually, no, they didn't get reinforced. Yeah, let's just disco ball this. I actually don't even see large hegemony... Or, er, hegemony. Large uh, remnant um, radiance and stuff like that. So this actually might not be that great for cores. It might just give me a lot of gammas. Which I don't need. I have 20-something of... But even though they don't have uh, the Radiance, I still have to be careful because the Brilliance is pretty strong. I don't think they're strong enough to take me down unless I flux kill myself. But they're trying to do that. This one is really trying to tax my flux, and right now my hard flux buildup is pretty high. Yeah, they're just harassing me. Yeah, I'm, I might have to get overloaded here. I don't really see much of an alternative. So I'm going to purposely drop my shields and just fire without shields. Oh, two giant torpedoes. That was well-timed, little ship. That really busted me up bad. More so than... Yeah, I think not taking the, um, the smaller ship seriously did the most damage. Um, trying to just stomp remnants is always a you're always gonna have a bad time luckily I have enough ship hull and armor to survive it but um, the amount of crew I probably lost from that um, from that those two torpedoes are probably quite a lot but I learned my lesson I won't be taking these small ones uh, as a joke yeah, no your torpedoes won't work this time I got shields buddy a little Fulgen. Or Fulgent. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a made up word. As far as I'm concerned. Well, another uh, change to this ship uh, is that I am I'm now running uh, the Salamander MRMs. Meaning that uh, some of my capacitors that I used to have is now taken up by those MRMs. So I have less flux capacity than I'm used to. Not that that's an excuse for allowing myself to get torpedoed in the face, but nonetheless a factor. Who's behind me? Just a little shit. In fact, the, uh, the other... Uh, Paragon next to me has taken some serious damage as well. Probably also got torpedoed unexpectedly. Alright, one beta it's not nothing, but it's not really the treasure trove I was looking for. Uh, let's move this out of the way. So I don't accidentally sell this stuff, because that would be very bad. Because my... Um, Augean just grew. That's great. Uh, we were going to make fuel here, so... Uh, we need to, so the problem is, um, yeah, let's just go straight to fuel production. So I'm, I just, uh, turned and burned cause, uh, I've got some damage to my flagship and I, it's going to be a while before I can repair that. I'm sort of curious if I was ever able to, yeah, I search those ruins, search these ruins. Yeah, I was pretty thorough, wasn't I? Pat myself on my own back. I did a good job sometime me in the past. Wonder what's here. A little supply cache. Oh 
I, I vaguely remember being you know, that supply cache and thinking to myself, oh, that'd be nice, but I'll never get close enough without these guys on my butt. Uh, so I've got 100% armor, but 82% haul. I could engage another one of them. Um, I'd be at not full strength, but uh, here's a Radiant ready to get blown up. So I'm sending in a, a mix of ships, ships that weren't damaged, ships that have high combat readiness. And we'll not be making the I'll let you flux me to death error again. Keeping my eye on the fulgence, making sure they don't torpedo me. I also be, have to be careful because some of the, um, as you can see, some of my um, battle cruiser uh, officers are a little kamikaze. I think this is Talon. No, that's Robinator. He jumped right on in there. Luckily, there's just enough of us that we can cover for him. But he's he's about to get fulgent torpedoed, I think. Get out of there, man. Get out of there. Stop blocking me. I'll help you. Oh, I saw some torpedoes, but they were blocked. Soon, they won't be. Man, they keep... These uh, fighters here are smart. They keep rotating around. I caught up. And they're destroyed. But they kept rotating around so that I, I couldn't have a clear shot on them. Uh, who, who you got left? You got this one brilliant out, out this way. And he's getting uh, stomped by uh, Europa's consort. And uh, gaze into the void. Yeah, you're dead. You're toast. And they're defeated. There we are. The alpha I was looking for. Said in a stupid accent for no particular reason. Well, I can always come back here. Maybe I want to stick around a little bit. I could probably get this cash. Not that it was worth it. Alright, so brilliance and brilliance. Well, let's actually combine these two fleets if I can. There. Now I'm fighting, I think, both of them at once. Saves me the trouble of... Okay. Half disco, half low tech. That works for me. Funny sticking um, remnant fighters in low tech ships. It's actually not a bad combination. The low tech ships close the gap, attack fast, burn drive to the enemies, and then the fighters swarm. It's like throwing beehives at enemies while running 90 miles an hour. That was a very strange use of burn drive off to my left there. You just hit burn drive like right in the swarm of them. It was not a functional use of it, I could say that much. Look at this poor Brilliant. 
You are in the middle of four battleships. Any last words? Besides, whoops. Ha! I'm using debris to my own advantage. My flux was high and I just dipped behind a little debris in this brilliant lost uh, sight of me. Long enough for me to fully bend. Yeah, I think these were both fleets combined. This is a lot of ships. Uh, how are you doing? You have... Yeah, let's give him back up. I think he's just being pecked to death. Oh, you really didn't need my help. Whatever, I'm here. Might as well help. Because there's two brilliance left, as far as I could tell. Okay, just one brilliant left. Can you guys handle them? Or do I have to come all the way up there? <sighs> guys, it's just a brilliant. Uh, I think he's back pedaling. So this is when operating in Odyssey would be really helpful. Ah, oh, there it goes. I do. Oh, I got some good cores out of it, though. Hey, look at that. Blew up both fleets. Just salvaged uh, some fighters or something. Some sparks. I don't know exactly what it was. More sparks. I didn't really need more sparks. I have tons of sparks. But, okay. Let's jump on out of here. And... Head back to... Kanan. Almost a mil and a half monthly income. Oh god, this storm. At least it pushes you quick, right? Um, the Synchrotron Core and the AI Core will be... Oh, Jingala's gone. Uh, there are two new Ogin and Dazog perch uh, sleeper cells. Of course there are. And, but Gilead's refining just got done, which should put me in pretty good prime position for the market takeover. So what I want to do is head to Gilead first, I guess. As we only have a few minutes left, I want to do some quick analysis of how my market share is doing. 78%. Oh, boy. 48. So, metals are almost there. Uh, metals are very, very close. I'm going to sign a... Uh, actually, let's sign a beta core there. Yeah, metals are quite close. Transplatonics are quite close. Yeah, we are closing in on that goal, for sure, of 50%. Gonna pop on down to the New Worlds. So, this New World has refining. Um, least I could do is a Gamma Core. 
and incentivize some growth. And then Ogion, I do believe, is using a... That's our new fuel world. And this should push our fuel production beyond the global market 50% threshold. Come on. These, I'm so used to how tightly packed Rama is, I forget how damn far these worlds can be apart. Alright, so fuel production, install the core. And in sign, I'll give it a, I'll give it an alpha, a full on alpha. Uh, this means that uh, volatiles, which I started at forty eight percent, is now sixty one. Uh, and then fuel, as soon as this thing's constructed, which is in ninety days, should be uh, should be rocking up past the 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 fifty one percent. Another thing I want to do right before I end this episode here is to build some orbital stations um, just for stability, protection, etc. Um. Alright, well, we have those orbital stations queued up, and that's all the time I have for you guys. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, questions, anything like that, do drop me a line. I'm very close to the end of this series. The 50% global market share will reign in the end. So probably in two days, that will be the last episode. I suspect uh, there will be a poll going out to my Patreon patrons pretty soon about what I should play next on my channel, whether it be a modded version of Star Sector or a new game entirely. And then after they rule those choices down to just a few, there will be a poll that goes out to everybody, anybody, uh, so that you could vote on the top choice and that becomes a new YouTube series. So I'm eager to see what you think about that. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you all next time. Adios.